Here we go with another edition of the Medieval Challenge, and I want to show you what I've got so far. All right, I have added a chimney. Just very simple stuff. I don't really need to show you how I did that. Uh, it's just got the brick texture, and it's got the iron texture on it. Um, I think I used the iron somewhere else. I'm not quite sure. This is metal. This was the darker material. So anyways, I did that. I created these um, shutters for the windows. It's really simple, you know, just two panels and something here and sort of bent them and stuff like that. Made a little hinge and put the metal texture on there. Uh, there's one on the ground there. I created this ladder. Uh, it's just sort of cylinders and some nails and I just put a different wood on it so it looked a little bit different. So I did that. Um, I created the pitchfork here. Um, you know, just with the with the metal and some wood. So again, it's, it's nothing special at all about the modeling. Um, this ground, uh, which might be staying, by the way, uh, is just got two textures. It's got a grass stones and it's got a mud. And I used texture painting to reveal uh, the mud here and there where I wanted. And I could do a video about that. And I might do that. That's just with two materials in texture painting. Um, I created a little stool here again very simple modeling and put on uh, the wood material just deformed it just a little bit changed the scale of a few things um, removed a couple of nails in the door so it's down to three let's see what else I put these things up there that may hold something or some rope or whatever may change the style of this I'm not sure but just it needed something up there so I got that there for now um what else i guess i got the two lanterns there uh this step just a couple of panels of wood this is just a box for the time being uh, like i say changed the scale of a few things and did the the, the bucket and really there was uh, there's nothing special at all here but i thought maybe i'll do a little video about about the bucket um and it's got the wood texture and it's got some the uh metal texture and then i i uh, textured this in substance painter and I don't know how realistic it looks but I think it looks kind of okay and I put one over there um, the plants uh, <laughs> I just I just made some some leaves and that they may or may not stay uh, I don't really feel like putting a bunch of vegetation on here as I had said in my vlog before and so I may focus mostly on the house and I do have plans to do a little bit more work on uh, the roof there maybe some hay we'll see all right, so let's have a look at making the, the bucket. All right, so how to do this? Well, let's, tr there's so many different ways. Let's try with the circle and go for maybe 10 vertices so it's not too high poly. I'm going to extrude this up and scale it out a little bit. All right, we'll just do it relatively kind of quick like that. Okay, so we have that so far. All right, um, let's put some edge loops so that we can uh, deform this later and go into face selection. I'm gonna select and control. And I'm gonna do every second one. So I'm pressing shift and clicking that and then control on the bottom one. So we have that. Let's separate these by pressing Y and G, just double check, come back. A to, uh, to select everything and come to individual origins and press S and I'm going to push and that should separate them out into panels. I'm not going to separate them too much. So we'll have something like that and then I go back to median point and number two for edge selection will select and then I can turn on proportional editing on random and just deform this just a little bit. And it'll come in and out here and there. And just a little a little bit of this and that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to here and then I'll change the length a little bit. Let's try normal and then we can go along. Um, I don't want to do this too much. This would I'm thinking this that this is, is more for, for like carrying wa you know, um fruits and stuff like that necessarily water probably would leak all right so i'm just going to change the heights of some of these so it looks a little bit 
off. You know, just that. Okay, so, so far so good. And now we'll try to give this some thickness with solidify. And I'm going to come inwards like that. See if it even makes a difference, does it really? Just get the thickness of your pieces of wood that you like. And then I'll add a bevel. Try 0 0.01, that might be too much. Actually, it's looking pretty good for that. Let's shade smooth and try normals auto smooth. All right, so we're getting our standard bucket. We may have a little bit of overlap here. And so uh, let's try going in here, back into individual origins and S to scale and see if we can separate these out a little bit like that. Mm. Yeah, it takes a little trial and error. And that's probably okay. All right, so let's um, let's apply that, and let's apply the bevel as well. And then we will add some rings. So I'm gonna bring in another circle. I might go more than 12, I might go 16. And we'll do a little bottom in here. So as we pull it up, I have to make a face and scale it out. E to extrude and pull down. And I'll select the whole thing and recalculate outside to make sure that we are, um, the polys are the right way. And that's fine. And we can add another circle and scale it out and then in edit mode I'm gonna press 1 for vertex selection and I'm going to extrude dead I guess I'll go downwards I'm gonna pull this one up though and scale it out and I'm gonna select the bottom one and I'm gonna pull it in just a little bit to follow the curve like that E and alt s and I'm gonna pull till it goes in and I'll X faces, we'll get rid of those faces, so I will have that. And now what I'll do is I'll come in and in two edge selection, I'll shift alt and click those edges and I'll control B, bevel, and I'll put one segment in there. I, I will probably put a subdivision on all of this and then scale it so that it, it you know fits and looks okay. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna scale it down and I want a smaller one down there and that looks okay to me so far so I think I will um, apply that subdivision in that one and so we have that I'll do those with separate materials okay and now some kind of a rope I'm just gonna look from the side and I think the way I'll do this uh, yeah okay is I'm gonna use a curve and I hope that's not too too wide. It might be, I might have to go to these two. Well, let's try it. I'm gonna bring in a curve path. Well, maybe I'll do it from the front. Let's see, let's pull that up, pull it out. Yeah, okay, front. Okay, I'm gonna go into edit mode and scale it down and just have a look at it. I think probably just going from the two is probably best. Uh, I'm gonna take uh, these, let's try these three and pull them down. And let's take these two and SX and pull them out. And then let's take these and extrude again and have another curve. And let's pull that in and, and just start giving it some thickness and see this is it's a curve. So we come down here under geometry and bevel depth. Just start pulling that up and get a sense for how thick you would want your your rope handle to be and pull that out a little bit and see if I like that I kind of do I think that probably looks all right I mean I could be wrong but um, 
I could try it a little bit closer. Would it look good if I made it longer? Probably not. All right, whatever. So something along that line is probably what I would go for. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come in here. I don't feel like punching holes in this. Um, you can have it stick through if you want. Um, I'm thinking of not doing that and I'm gonna see it too, too closely. So what I'll do is instead, I'm gonna come in here and select here and shift S uh, cursor to selected and I'll make another piece here. You can do it 16 is fine. Um, so there, it has something to attach to. Let me give this a bit of thick, a big a bit of thickness, and Control B, and do something like that. We will shade smooth. We can come in here and get rid of this back face, like that. And I'll take this and just rotate it, push it in, and that could be a piece of metal. Uh, actually, I'll make it a bit smaller that this attaches to, maybe goes through. Um, actually, what I might need to do is pull this all out and have it like that, and then just, just keep playing with this until I like it. almost like around there and again it doesn't have to be perfect because it's you know it's old and stuff like that and then uh, is there any way to maybe I can put my 3d cursor there mirror across that thing all right set the origin to the 3d cursor and mirror and maybe I'll apply the mirror and then but I'll come over here because these are warped a little bit and I'll just move this a bit you can change its position and look a little bit less perfect if that ma even matters so I would have that and that's basically it and then I mirror it to the other side okay so assuming we like that let's go ahead and convert this curve to a mesh so come to the curves. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna try three for the resolution and convert to mesh. And I'll eventually, I'll, I'll end up putting a subdivision on it anyhow. So maybe I didn't need to, to do it like that. Okay, let's create um, a wood material. And let's create a metal material. And this, of course, is going to be a rope. And this will also be the metal. Okay, and for this guy, we're going to probably use Smart UV Project. Probably just like that. I want to be go ahead and do the wood. Again, it's just going to be the wood from the previous. So shift control T and find your find your materials. So there's the wood, but the orientation is wrong. So I'm going to select, rotate 90, um, pack islands, but I don't want to rotate it. And let's have a look at that. So that's what I'm going to want there. And for the metal, um, let's let's just try. Um, let's see what an unwrap looks like. Hmm. 
Let's try this one. I don't like that one. This is going to be the one. Color, metalness. I'm using EV. I don't need the displacement. I'll do that. And then we'll come in here. And I'll add a color gamma. And darken it up. Put something like, we'll try 1.5. I probably would actually go for 2. And let's just see what this, if I unwrap. Yeah, and let's put it on there as well. Those are maybe a bit smooth, I don't know. Um, I think I could probably uh, join those. And uh, let's go back over here. So the rope now, I'm going to, uh, I guess I'm going to apply that. And I'll come here, let's just focus on, on that. And on the underside, I'm going to uh, sh shift alt and click to get that edge and uh, mark seam. And let's just go to UV editing. And will you unwrap and we'll get this. Okay, it's not too bad. It's a little busy. Uh, let's come in here in an edge selection, select there, SY0. We'll just straighten this out uh, if we can. SY0, SX0, SX0. And then in face selection, I'll select that and then control L, zoom out, and I'll try follow active quads. And that straightens it out. I'll just scale in just a little bit. I'm just moving in. Okay, so we have that unwrapped and we're ready to go. All right, I'm going to export that as an FBX. There's my rope. And I need to bake the mesh maps for this. So I'm going to bake them at 2K, uncheck ID, and just bake. Okay, over to the layers now. I'm going to add a fill layer. Come into the properties and I'm going to change the color and try to give it sort of a, a ropey, a ropey color. And then I can, I can adjust this later. So I'll just do this. I'll just do this quick for you. Uh, let's bring the roughness way up. Okay. Mm. All right, we'll start with uh, that. Okay, under procedurals, I am going to look for fibers two, and I'm going to drag that into the height. And I'm going to play around with the scale. I'm going to bring the scale up and the rotation up. All right, so, you know, we're faking it here. But hopefully it's going to look relatively okay. All right, so we got that. And I don't want them too tight because I want to be able to see from a bit of a distance what we've got going on. All right, let's try now adding, um, we'll add levels uh, on the height. And just play with this. All right, you can see we can, we can sort of tighten that up. And then we're going to add another uh, filter. And we're going to add a blur filter. Starts looking a little bit more like rope. All right, it's there. And we're even going to add another filter. I think we're gonna do a sharpen. Okay. Try sharpen it now. Okay, so hopefully from a distance, um, it'll look okay depending on where the light the light is. And I can play around with um, the colors as well if I want. Filter again, HSL. Maybe saturate it a bit more. 
maybe come back to here and and uh, so I got the roughness I don't know that I no, I'm not going to need that I'm not going to need that I'm not going to need that okay you can adjust these to sharpen it up too I don't want it too sharp roughness is up all right and then it's just a question of trying to get the color you like for rope and then maybe on top of all of that we could do a fill layer with a black mask and uh, actually all I need is color really maybe height we'll get a dark brown color here almost black and uh, we'll get a smart mask Let's try this one here, just to throw something on top of it. That one's not doing it. Let's try this dirt ground. You know, just to have a little bit of dirt. It's going mostly there, right? So I think I'll try, let's try dirt dry leak. Yeah, it's there, but it's not much. kind of like dirt spots just to do something on there I'm gonna see it up close so let's say that was what we were going for for the time being I'm gonna bring the roughness up okay so then I would um, export those textures back to blender I'm gonna select the principled shift control T and uh, look for my textures bucket rope there it is all of those all right they're in it's looking a little yellow to me but i'm going to put on a color gamma on here and go for something like 1.2 maybe it didn't seem to do much let's try two that's working okay maybe one even 1 1.8 there's a old dirty rope let's get that to the other side though so let's take uh, let's see let's take though let's join those and um, okay let's get it as close as we can so what we'll do is we will select something here and uh, shift s cursor to selected and we'll take this and we'll mirror set the origin to the 3d cursor and we'll mirror it and we'll see how close and that looks not bad to me oh let's not forget to take this and unwrap that and put on that wood material as well don't really see much down there anyhow right now and there it is and it's really going to depend on um, on the lighting very much so you just get a sense of what it would look like uh, in the preview all right so that is going to be it for that and we'll come back when i've got some more stuff to show you uh, in the medieval challenge thanks for watching and see you again soon